David, there's plenty of room. These seats really hold you well, don't they? I like them. They do grip you yep. well without being it too intrusive. And there's plenty of room here, and here, and in here. There's even enough room in the boot for a fat old journalist. Well, Alan, what have we got? Uh, the Toyota Corolla-sized Renault Megane GT. That Corolla-sized vehicle, Master 3, have always been initially rather bland, but they're getting much more sporty, at least a top model, aren't they? Yeah, well, of course, uh, what Renault have done with this is they've left room above this for a very, very go-quick one. Mm. So this one uh, is 151 kilowatts and 280 newton meters, 1.6 petrol four-cylinder turbo engine. 151, I mean a Golf GTI was about that not that long ago, it's only 162 now. Yeah. So, and we went round in the Hyundai i30 SR, that was about 150. I think this sounds much more the GT. I think so too, and of course this has the added advantage of having four-wheel steering. That is unbelievable, isn't it? In a car of this size and type, how did you find it? How did you feel? Does it change the feel to you? It does very much. It makes it feel uh, well. You'll probably remember that uh, last Honda Prelude mm. that had four wheel steering, mm. and it's very clever the way it works. You go slowly, and the wheels turn together. Uh, and if but the faster you go, the um, the wheels turn in the same direction. So if you're going fast, it'll crab like if you're changing yeah. lane. Yeah. If you're parking, it'll be like one of those articulated truck things. That's that, right. You know, the, the wheels turn that help you uh, make a nice sharp turn of it. I found driving it on the open highway it took a little bit of used to. It still, it felt a little unnatural, but boy, did it just turn into corners. It does, and, and it, the, the engine is so sweet. It's such a beautiful, smooth, free-spinning engine. And I really like this seven-speed DSG. Mm. As far as DSGs go, it's pretty awesome. You find the whole package fits together well. And it sounds quite good. Uh, as I say, the Hyundai didn't really have a bit of a, a roaring sound to it yeah. as what this does. Well this has got uh, some driving modes obviously uh, one of them is and I've got it in the personal one at the moment I've programmed that the transmission and the um, you know all the driving modes to, to my personal taste so I've also got the sportier engine note that's doing it to your personal taste. It's it's not to the nth degree, but we're getting further down that track, aren't yeah, we? Where yeah. you can select parameters that suit you. Yeah. Not just one, two or three, but perhaps a few other variations of that. Well, the good thing is, of course, the older I've gotten, the lighter I want my steering to be. Okay. And so now I put it on light steering, comfortable suspension and uh, uh, throaty, and, and quick engine response so that I get the maximum joy out of driving with the minimum discomfort uh, and I only put it on hard suspension and hard steering and so forth when I um, uh, you know want to have a, a spirited drive say in the National Park or with a very twisty road yeah, you know. or on a racetrack or something not that we get to do that very often uh, the other thing of course is that this is not four-wheel drive so there is a bit of torque steer when you really stick the boot in. Yeah, that uh, getting the power to the ground. There's, there's, there's not. I have no trouble with it, but you know it is a little bit annoying. I'll tell you what, we will drive. This has got automated parking. Mm, but um, I'm just going to try and find some cars to park behind. Okay. Are there any cars to park behind? Around? Have you seen any cars to park behind? Uh, no, this is suburbia that has enough uh, driveway space for you to park your car. It's like, it's almost like something from Valley of the Dolls or Children of the Corn or something. Invasion of the Body Snatchers. It's like there's, there's cars and there's footpaths and there's roads, but there's no people. You know, you think all the people have died. Yeah. How, how do you find the interior? I, it, it's got a big flat screen. It was yeah. more north-south than it is east-west. Yeah, yeah. So that portrait mode, uh, I, I personally like. I think it's great. You know, you, you do 
find that some of the screens are a little bit smaller than if they were displayed on a landscape screen. Um, but for example, if you've got the sat nav on, the whole screen, you can have the whole screen as sat nav. Mm. So, you know, you get a, the, the vision of the map that you're on okay. isn't just um, one yes. little tiny bit. Do you know what I mean? Well, like particularly is. north south, because yeah. you tend to have the arrow pointing in the direction upwards of where you're going. That's right. Yeah, yeah. It's flat. It's it's a very flat uh, screen and, and surrounds to it. Well, that's square. You like that? I do. I do. I do like square. What I don't like is little bits chopped off just for the sake of a Jaguar. You know that Jaguar thing drives me utterly nutty. <laughs> Now look, it's got rounded edges, it's artistic. The front of it is quite busy, but I think it's quite balanced. It's got that corporate front end, as I said uh, earlier. The, the, um, most of the Renaults have got that, you know, quite a big, uh, almost Dame Edna, um, almost Dame Edna look, you know, that one that yes. Honda's got. Nice little square lights. That, that we've made lights, we've had them big, and now we've had them little and round. Now yeah. they're getting square to them. Oh, you uh, like inside, that? Yeah, I do. I do very, very. Were there indeed. rounded corners on it? I don't think so. So no, I think were, you approve. It, well, it wasn't the fact that there's rounded corners. It's the fact that in the Jaguar they've got them at the top, then they've got different ones at the bottom in the Chevron, and that's just wrong. They sh that designer should have been flogged. Alan, you like the rear, the tail of it? I think it looks really smart. I love the way the the LEDs carve a, a wave through the back. You know, it's not just boring. You know how lights used to be boring, dull yeah. as ditch water. It'd be one light there, you know, a red light, an orange light, a white light, and that was it. Yes. And now they're, they're carving beautiful shapes through it just because they can. I think it gives, a, as you say, a flow across it rather than just a flat canvas yeah. of which you've stuck a couple of squares on. Absolutely. And they're big. And then the front lights as well. The front lights have that really big daytime running light, yeah, the LED daytime running light. Now, remember once upon a time, this is not a new thing. Volvo was doing daytime running lights 40 years ago. Yes. You might remember, remember you turn the, the car on yep. and the parking lights would come on and stay on. And the research clearly shows that it reduces accidents. Yeah. And you say, why? Well, I don't know. It's just that when lights are on, you notice it even in the daylight. Well, that's right. Well, I mean, just driving around here just now, it's quite a, quite a bright, sunny afternoon. And yet, you know, I can see this uh, this Toyota coming towards me with the, the vertical lights. Hmm. Um, uh, you know, it really makes even the cars that have got their parking lights on, Someone once opposed it because they claim that by having your lights on you'll use a little bit more power therefore you'll lose a little bit more petrol and they wanted to work out whether it was worthwhile and it seems to me that saying and we turn left soon up here that saying that I, you know, if everyone has to cost a sip of petrol that may say one person being a quadriplegic Yeah, I mean I, I just um, that just seems like an extraordinary thing for someone to say that you know, a, a small amount of power might save a life, but is it worth it? Hmm. God, some people are really strange. Yeah, that, interesting stuff. I quite like it from the side, although I think the nose looks just a little bit heavy for the rest of the body. It has that traditional sloping nose, which has been set up probably for pedestrian safety as much as anything. It slightly slopes down, droops just a little. It does, it does drip down a and, little bit. And yeah. protrudes a little, yeah. but again, Gee, you look at the Subaru XV, all those are, are starting well, to get that sort of shape. They're trying to give you a little bit of space, you know, above the engine so that if, if a pedestrian hits the bonnet, the bonnet will deform, but they won't uh, uh, sustain damage by hitting yeah, the top of the engine block. Makes it like a trampoline, it's got yeah. some give to it, but yeah. the other thing, the sloping nose means that you don't hit a pedestrian and throw them yeah, forward, yeah, you yeah. tend to trip them onto the bonnet which sounds bad, but it's a heck of a lot better than going forward and being run over. Oh, now, i tell you what I do want to discuss. There's no Apple CarPlay and Android Auto in this. Oh, okay, yeah. You know, this is this is a GT. It's going to be aimed at the, um, you know, the boy racer, the, you know, kind of youngish, hmm. slightly hooligan -y sort of person that likes this, you know, genuine fake imitation blue um, carbon fibre, and yet they've not put the connectivity in. Yeah, technology, you know, they like that sort of stuff. Mm. And I just think, 
I just want to be able to get into a car and have some common dials that I don't have to read a 500 page manual yeah. to try and operate. Well, do you know, it, the, the, the controls on this radio are virtual, so they've, they've got uh, you know buttons in the main screen and then they've got some fixed electronic buttons down the left hand side. Hmm. So here are the radio controls here on a stalk, oops, here are the radio controls here on a stalk behind the steering wheel. I've turned this so that you can see it, but you know they're, they're a little bit hard to see and I've never liked them. All French cars were at it at one stage or other. And you know, the, the I don't know, I, I think it could be a little bit clearer, don't you? Mm. I think that could be a little bit clearer. They have got better though. Do you remember Renault's used to have, if you wanted to change from AM to FM, you had to do three buttons, and one was number five, one was number 21, and one was number uh, 22. But they're still at it, David. They're still at it. Here's the cruise control and speed limiter down here on the dash. So it's actually split between these buttons on the steering wheel, and these buttons on the console. Mm. I mean, so you've got to press this over here first so that you can get the cruise control or speed limiter switched on, but let's say cruise control. Then you've got to come over here while you're driving at 100 kilometers an hour, and it'll only set if you press the up button. If you press the down button, like every other car maker in creation, nothing happens. That's to, to turn the um, cruise control into standby mode. That's to resume. I just think that's crazy. And if you want to go to a different speed, you speed up and then press the up arrow again. Oh, I don't like that at all. No. But if you do a down and an up, it'll go down or up in two kilometre an hour increments. Can we film the dash, the, the, the sig signals? You just... Uh, what do you want to film? Now, this is part digital part normal analog isn't it yeah so the bit in the middle is digital and you can change that the bits at the side are the old analog are, are old analog dials mm. now interestingly you can go into the uh, the the menu system here and you can select different uh, uh, different dot. Now see, it's doing it again. I've got to go in and do so. Personal changes the dash to this. Sport, neutral, comfort. Now, unfortunately, only the sport and personal have a digital speedo. Yeah, I love a digital speedo. I just, I think it's clarity. It seems to do it very, very simply. I agree. The other thing that I don't like about this is that if you go in one way and call up a screen, after two seconds it dumps you out. Yeah, so in, if I want to go in and, and do what you're suggesting, I had to go into, no, I had to go into home, what did I have to do? I had to get into settings. Oh no, I know what I had to do. I had to go into menu. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, try again. Okay. So if we want to go into that, into this, um, into this mode, so that it doesn't turn off again, if I just don't do anything for a few seconds, that goes back to what it was before. If you don't want that to happen, you have to go into menu, and that's also changed, you know, from personal to. Uh, you have to go into system, and then you have to go and you know change things that you want to change. So, you know. Um, vehicle, for example, you know, you can, you know, you can go and look at tyre pressures and so on, and then it'll stay there as long as you like. But if you go in through another way, yeah. it dumps you out after two seconds. That's right. So that's the that's the same menu as this button down here, the RS Sport button. Um, and as you can see, when I press that button, it'll change and scroll through those um, uh, those options but only between neutral and sport. If you want comfort, you've got to go in and into this menu and press this button. Now you can get a shortcut to that. Let me go back. I could have just pressed the home button, sorry. So you can shortcut to it by just pressing this and then quickly coming up and pressing comfort. And then if you don't do anything in a second, that'll go back to 
uh, whatever screen you had it on. You didn't touch anything? I didn't touch anything, no. So then if I want to go to my preferred thing that I've, uh, my preferred setting that I've personalised for myself, Perso is short for personalised. I don't know why they just didn't put custom or something like that, but there you go. Uh, that just about wraps it up. Oh, uh, what do you think of the um, what do you think of the seats and so forth? Uh, I love the seats. Yeah, I think the seats are they look good. You know the colour inserts and that, and they grip you well. They incredibly supportive. Hmm. I like the blue Alcantara. Uh, it, it sort of matches the the indigo of this lighting that I've selected, which by the way is customizable, and in a way matches the genuine fake artificial simulated blue carbon fiber inserts. And I'm I, I must admit I'm fond of a genuine fake artificial simulated uh, uh, fitting. I think that looks absolutely first class. And down here, of course, is that. Down here, of course, is that Renault Sport badge that you want to see. Yes, I, I once bought a watch that was a genuine imitation. Did you? Did mm. it last? No. 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 